Hello, this is the fourth video of the Algorithm 3 series on further algorithms and efficiency for OCR discrete further mathematics. And we will be looking at packing algorithms for bin packing in two dimensions. Previous videos we looked at full bin, first fit and first fit decreasing algorithms. And all objects had the same width and depth, so only their height mattered. In other words, they were one-dimension problems. Using the first fit decreasing algorithm, the objects were first sorted into descending height and then packed in turn into the first bin in which they would fit. Note that the bin height was 10 units and that this first fit decreasing algorithm was a more efficient algorithm than the first fit and that in this particular example it gives an optimum solution which is equal to the lower bound. However, this one-dimensional model is rather too simplistic for real-world problems. The two-dimensional bin packing problem is defined as given a collection of rectangles specified by their width and height, pack these into the minimum number of equal size bins of a specified size. We need to note that the rectangles cannot overlap nor be rotated and must be packed parallel to the edges of the bin. So we are again modelling using boxes but this time, whilst they all have the same depth, they have varying height and varying width. This is more akin to real world problems, for example, warehouse storage or packing containers. However, it is still a simplified model, as in practical cases, there are often additional constraints. So here we may be looking at boxes which are this shape, or this shape, or even this shape. Noting that their height and width varies, but their depth, which would give them that 3D aspect, is the same. So the aim is generally to pack the items into the smallest number of bins. This makes sure that we have an efficient use of resources. There are no algorithms that solve this exactly, so heuristic algorithms are used with the aim of achieving a reasonably good solution that can be programmed efficiently. You may remember that a heuristic means a solution that is not necessarily optimal, but is always feasible and practical. So, many algorithms involve sorting by some aspect and then packed into layers into the bins. And here the aspect might be height, width, area or perimeter. And the layers in effect are levels. So those are set by the height of the first item. So other things can be packed alongside them on that level but we can only pack items with their bases on these layers or levels, not on top of other boxes. It is also worth reminding you that heuristic algorithms are mostly what we call greedy algorithms, which you may remember involves making the best choice at every stage without looking ahead or finding the best choice overall. And we will see that our human brains can probably spot better choices, but we must remember to follow the algorithm. So here is an example of an algorithm that you may be given in a question. You do not need to learn any algorithms by rote for this kind of problem, merely to link the idea of two-dimensional bin packing to the one-dimensional bin packing previously encountered. So building on that first fit type algorithm, First, sort the objects by decreasing height. And we can see that this has already been done for you here. Step two is to take each object and fit it into the lowest level of the first bin in which it will fit, creating a new level as necessary. If there is not sufficient vertical space, then we start 
a new bin. When we have placed all the objects, then we stop. Let's carry out these steps and see what happens. So there's our first item and it will fit in to the first bin. We have now then created a level. The second item will not fit on that lower level or a second level of the first bin, so we put it in the second bin. And again, we may need to create a new level. We cannot fit that third object either on the first or second level of the first bin, nor the second. So it has to go into the third bin. The next object we would try in both levels of those bins. And finally, we can put it in a second level of the third bin. The fourth object won't go in the lower level of the first bin, but it will fit on the second level of the first bin. This object will fit on that lower level because there's room for its base to fit, if you like, on the floor. This object wouldn't fit on the first, but it will fit on the second level. This third one will not fit in either level in the first bin or on the lower level of the second bin, but it will fit on the second level of the second bin. This object will not fit on either level of the first or second bin, but we can fit it on the second level of the third bin. Again, we'll try this object and find that it will fit on the lower level of the second bin. This object, again, whilst it would fit on that lower level, it can't sit on another item. It has to sit with its base on a level. So therefore it goes on the second level of the second bin. Similarly, with this object here, it cannot fit in until the first level of the third bin. And this one here, although it would fit there, it cannot sit on top of another box, and so it has to go into a fourth bin. Again, this we could think we could squeeze it in, but we can't place it on top of another object. And so therefore, to put it on the floor, if you like, we have to put it in the third bin. However, we can now put in a new level in the second bin. And therefore, it's possible to fit this last item into that third level in the second bin. Although it's a two-dimensional bin packing problem, essentially it's one-dimensional along each level created. So the algorithm gave a packing that required four bins, but looking at it, we'd like to think we can use fewer bins. And the lower bound would be, if we counted it all up, 264 divided by 100, which would indicate that we might be able to get away with as few as three bins. And by inspection, we can see that the item in bin four will fit into bin three. And thus, we only need three bins if we were able to put in a level there. Again, this is an example where our human brains, when we're dealing with small problems, find a better solution than an algorithm. If we were to change the aspect and sort these items by perimeter or area rather than by height, it would turn out that in this case we get exactly the same packing. So the algorithm is reasonably robust. In the next video, we'll look at packing algorithms to deal with the knapstack problem.